The February 1942 executive order declared that all people of Japanese ancestry were excluded from California, parts of Oregon, Washington, and Arizona, except for those incarcerated in government internment camps. The government took everything away from hundreds of thousands of Japanese Americans when they forcibly relocated them from their homes and communities to first holding areas, then to barren basic camps throughout the western United States. The one thing the government didn't take away was baseball. The sport was an integral part of the community and the culture for decades. Incredibly, the internees, both men and women, built fields, recreated their teams, and formed leagues bringing hope and dignity to the community. Even with the daily humiliation and the despair of the camps ever present, baseball brought a semblance of their American life back to them. Kerry Yo Nakagawa, an historian, author, and filmmaker, also considered an authority on this part of Japanese American history, tells us how baseball impacted life in these miserable times for Japanese Americans. It was ironic because the government took everything away from them that they were passionate about. They took away their uh, radios, their cameras. Even though they took everything away from them that was American, they didn't take the all-American pastime. And instead of them being bitter and rejecting it, they embraced it. Baseball was something that uh, all the Issei loved. They encouraged their American kids to play the game, both genders, whether it be softball for women, baseball for the guys. All 10 camps had a baseball diamond. At Minidoka, Idaho's camp, there were 13 diamonds, softball and baseball. Imagine having the passion to make 13 baseball fields. Kenichi Zenimura built a field of dreams, not in Iowa in a cornfield, but on a Gila River Pima Indian reservation with grass infield, grass outfield. The uh, foul lines was chalked with uh, flour. They had castor bean home run fence that looked like Wrigley Field. Seven, 8,000 internees would go out to the game. It had 32 teams at Gila River, Arizona alone, three different divisions. It really brought a sense of normalcy back to the internees. It, it gave them a sense of being back home. Physical conditioning uh, was uh, taken care of. They practically played year-round because of the desert heat. The uh, ingenuity was incredible. The ingenuity of the women, the mothers, to take mattress ticking and stencil topaz or whatever team camp they came from with paint. A lot of the uniforms had these stripes while it was the mattress ticking from their mattresses. They would make handmade uniforms. The irony of the Gila River campsite, Zenimura Field, was that it was built on the outside of the barbed wire. So they had two entrances with coffee cans and the internees would drop in a quarter or however much change they had. Kenichi actually had box seats uh, drawn out so that if you paid extra money, you could have a box seat, and that would help fund the teams for bases and uniforms and bats. And they found very creative ways to fund their equipment, their uh, games. If you had, say, a relative that passed away outside the camp, the government wouldn't let you leave to just go to that service. Putting on a baseball uniform gave you this amnesty to get on a train, take buses. The fact that they were able to go you know, thousands of miles, uh, many states away for a home-and-home -home baseball tournament uh, was pretty incredible. While travel was severely restricted for internees, camp teams were given permission to travel to other camps to play baseball games. Hundreds of men's baseball and women's softball teams were formed from 1942 through 1946 from internees in the concentration camps. With armed guards, watchtowers, and searchlights ever present, baseball games brought dignity and hope to the hundreds of thousands of Japanese Americans living this life in the internment camps. U.S. history as seen through the eyes of baseball, brought to us by AmericanInnings.org.